part 8 of how to make a coal fired steam engine boiler plant and this is called making the boiler fittings. Most of the time you can buy boiler fittings off the shelf but these boiler fittings are sort of boiler fitting extensions that I'm making so I can't really buy those off the shelf they have to be custom made to suit the boiler. This is a piece of phosphor bronze. It's always a good idea to make fittings that are going to be screwed into a copper boiler out of phosphor bronze. And I can hear some people out there thinking, well, I don't understand that, that's a silly idea. Most of the boiler fittings are made from brass, and this, of course, is very true. But, a couple of days ago, I was having a look at a very old boiler that's in the workshop. This came from a model that I resurrected a while back. But I noticed there was a very nice brass clack valve on it. So I thought to myself, I will have that for my collection of random small brass clack valves. What I tend to do after a while when I've accumulated quite a lot of old fittings and bits and pieces from steam engines is I put them on eBay. So here I was unscrewing this clack valve from this vintage copper boiler and it snapped off in my hand and I wasn't even using a spanner. The brass on the clack valve was very brittle and I'm told this is due to what's called de-zinkifying. It may be a cathodic process because a copper boiler is made of copper and a brass clack valve is made of brass which is an alloy. As the lathe work involved in making these extensions for the taps and the safety valve is a very simple one, that's why I'm able to talk about complicated things like de-zinkifying brass. Even if you're a beginner to this kind of thing, you will see what I'm doing very clearly on screen at the moment. It is the simplest of plain turning jobs and now I'm drilling a hole down the middle. And what I will then do, while I'm doing it at the moment, is I'm threading the narrow part. And this narrow part is a quarter of an inch in diameter and I'm threading it a quarter by 40 threads per inch, which will match the threads in the top of the boiler. You have to be careful here. Some boilers, particularly the cheddar range of boilers, use 32 threads per inch. So it's a quarter by 32 TPI. Don't get the two mixed up. For instance, if you try and screw a fitting with a quarter by 40 thread into a threaded hole in the boiler that is quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch, what will happen is at first you will think, oh, this is okay, it's the right thread. And then suddenly the thread will tighten up. And if you continue, you will probably shear off the fitting. And then you have to drill out the part of the fitting that's left in the boiler which is not good fun. I can think of a lot of things that are not good fun, but I won't go into them now, apart from this one. In a moment, I will be parting off this piece of metal. And you can see me here positioning the parting tool so I get the piece of metal the correct length. The problem with parting off is, well, there's lots of problems with parting off, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. So the parting tool cuts through the metal, and then the part that you've lovingly crafted falls into the chip tray. I don't do this, if you notice, I put a small drill shank into the hole and that catches the part. Alternatively, if you do like things that are not particularly pleasant, like rummaging through the chip tray full of very nasty pieces of sharp metal, possibly you could invest in a medical grade stapler. Or practice bobbing for apples with razor blades in them. Anyway, that's enough of my strangeness. This is a top tip. To complete this boiler fitting adapter or extension, I need to now drill a hole in the other end of it. This hole is going to be 7 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, which is tapping size for quarter by 40. And if the hole goes too far down and comes into contact with the quarter by 40 thread at the other end, it will drop off. And just so this doesn't happen, so I can tell exactly how deep I'm drilling, the easiest way is to put a collar on the drill. This is a piece of silicone rubber. You could use a piece of plastic tube, but if the drill got hot, the tube would just melt and drop off into the chip tray. And now, with the hole at the correct depth, and definitely not too near the thread at the other end, I can tap this. I'm using a quarter by 40 tap, and I'm doing it manually. I'm rotating the chuck by hand. I'm on my little Boxford lathe, and the tailstock chuck on this lathe is not good. Note to self, buy a new one. It tends to work loose, but really, I don't mind that happening because I've never broken a tap in there. What will happen if I put too much pressure on it, the tap just spins round in the chuck. But it can get a bit annoying, particularly when I'm trying to make a video. If by any slight chance you've had a computer malfunction and the video's jumped in at this point, 
I'm now making a turret. A steam turret is a fitting that holds more than one tap, and it starts off the same way as the extension pieces, in as much as it has a thread that screws into the boiler, but at the other end I'm turning a quarter of an inch register, which will then allow this part to locate accurately on a piece of bar that will hold more taps. And after drilling the holes in the bar and threading them to take the taps, the bar would be silver soldered to the top of this extension. So the story so far. I have three extensions that screw into the boiler and then the fittings can be screwed into them apart from this one which is going to be made into a turret. Well that's the plan anyway. And before I get any emails or messages, yes I know they're wobbling about a bit when I prod them with the screwdriver but that's because they're not screwed into the boiler very much at all. What I'm about to do is just do a rough mock-up of a turret that would fit here on the boiler. And do you know, I don't like it one bit. Maybe it's the squareness that's offensive, so I'll try a piece of round phosphor bronze. No, I don't like that. I'll just try the square piece on again, if it'll stay there. No, that just doesn't look right. The squareness against the shape of the rest of the boiler would be offensive. I think what I'll do is go back to plan A and just make an extension for a master tap and then I will build a three-way turret and fit that to the baseboard. I remachined the third extension piece to match the others and this is going to be the general layout. A couple more things to do. I need a quarter by 40 blowdown valve and in common with the safety valve on the right hand side of the picture the screw threads on both of these fittings are too big. This clip shows the modified safety valve which now screws into the quarter by 40 adapter. And what I'm about to do is make a semi-permanent connection between the safety valve and the extension piece by using some Loctite 542 and to make sure the parts are tight I put the extension piece in the chuck, fit a washer, coat the thread in Loctite 542 and using my trusty Barco spanner I tighten the safety valve into the extension piece. The next part to modify is the blowdown valve and here I'm machining away the old thread which was a 3 8 thread. I need to reduce the 3 8 of an inch diameter down to a quarter of an inch diameter and while the part is still in the lathe I will thread it using my tailstock die holder. This of course is being threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch. This is a very good fitting, it's made out of phosphor bronze but what puzzles me a little bit is why is it such a big thread? Or why was it such a big thread? It's only a very small valve and it's perfectly in scale with this boiler. I would have thought that a boiler having a 3 8 by 32 thread in the blowdown bush would have been quite a big boiler, so why such a small valve? Time now to have a look at the boiler top fitting. This is going to have a superheater element in it, and by element I mean a bent loop of copper pipe. So I need to make the fittings that will take this copper pipe and allow me to assemble it inside the housing. This time I'm machining some hexagon bar. This is brass because it's not being connected to the boiler. And the first thing to do is to centre drill the end of it. This is going to be the end where the cone union fits so the centre needs to be quite deep. Then I'm going to machine the outer part of it to 5 16ths of an inch in diameter. Then I'm going to thread it using a die that will cut a thread 5 16ths by 32 threads per inch. And to save time I've done all that and I've also parted off the piece and this clip shows me using a file to clean up the sharp edge. Filing in the lathe can be very dangerous and I do not recommend it. Please do not try this at home. I'm not going to show a repeat procedure of making two of these. I've tried to speed it up to get past the tedious part. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling a hole in the centre of a piece of hexagon bar and I'm going to make some nuts with an internal thread 5 16ths by 32. And these finished brass nuts will allow me to tighten up my superheater into the fitting at the top of the boiler. This clip of course is speeded up and it shows me threading the piece of brass. And now it's parting off time and to prevent having to rummage about in the chips at the bottom of the lathe I'm using the back end of a tap to just catch the part as it comes off the main stock. I actually threaded enough of the hexagon bar to part off more than two nuts because it's good to have 5 16ths by 32 nuts in a tin in the workshop and it means that they're instantly accessible rather than having to make some more. And once again I'm using the shank of a tap to prevent the part from falling into the chip tray. 
To finish off the pair of superheated ends, all I need to do is cross drill them. I'm using a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill for 5 30 seconds pipe. And here they are. I may end up using 3 16 pipe, but I think it's going to be a little bit too thick. All I'm going to use is a single loop, similar to this piece of pipe, but maybe not quite as much of it. In exactly the same way as I showed the making of the 5 16 by 32 nuts, I made a 3 8 by 32 nut, and this is for the inside end of the exhaust union. Especially for a viewer who commented that disappointingly he hadn't seen much of my Barco spanners recently, here is one of my small Barco spanners, and I'm gently using it to tighten this fitting. I will of course have to silver solder the superheater element together, as well as the exhaust pipe that has to go up the chimney. By the way, I am going to make a collar that goes below the safety valve, and not only will this collar make the safety valve look better, it will also help to hold the top cap to the boiler itself. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.